Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the notion yet again that people very much in the know, in business, in the city are convinced that the UK government is going to arrange some sort of deal and certainly when I look at what's been said there is a subtle shift in what the UK government are saying and it does sound like they are certainly angling for a deal. So what I'd like to do is to examine where we are in terms of post-Brexit trade and why it really is the case that there is a massive impetus for Boris Johnson to come away with it. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So when we look at, uh, and again, this, I'm just going to look at goods here. We all know that, well, we may all not all know, I'll tell you anyway, our trade in services is worth four times our trade in goods. Um, if we don't get deals, we are basically knackered on those for the simple reason that for all Brexiteers saying they're delighted to be trading on World Trade Organization terms, World Trade Organization terms provides a bit of a safety net for trading in goods. A bit. It's not very good. For services, this is next to nothing. So all we can really do is talk about goods here. For services, we need a deal. That's all there is to it. We need a deal. Whereas for goods, we can contemplate not having a deal. So in terms of our exports in 2019, uh, by value, 43% of our exports went to the EU, our closest neighbours, of course. 15.5% to the US, 6.5% to China. So 65% of all of our exports went to these three large economies, China, the United States and the EU. Um, now, when we go through each of those, so in theory, we could get a free trade agreement with the EU. And in fact, again, there's an awful lot of people when I read um, business newspapers like the Financial Times and other ones as well, they always talk about it being surely there will. There has to be. There has to be. But in order to get a free trade agreement with the EU, which bear in mind now, just to be clear, a free trade agreement doesn't mean, oh, finally, we get, you know, uh, it'll be just the same as when we were members of the EU. No, no, no. All that means is tariff-free trade. It doesn't mean to say we won't have barriers. Remember, Michel Barnier produced a very helpful document a month or two ago, which highlighted all the issues there's going to be, come what may. Even if we negotiate a free trade agreement with the EU, which is not the same as a full comprehensive deal, if we uh, uh, get a free trade agreement, Sure, it means tariffs and quotas go away, but there's still <clears throat> some checks have to be carried out. There's certainly more paperwork has to be carried out. You know, so a lot of the friction in trade is still going to be there. And remember, we do not have the infrastructure in place to deal with it. So we're still talking about delays at the border. However, if we've got a free trade agreement, we could mitigate some of the worst effects of that. But in order to get that free trade agreement, the EU say that we need to agree. To, well, we, technically, we already did agree in the withdrawal agreement, but we must commit legally to agreeing to the level playing field, which is basically agreeing to EU rules on state aid, competition, taxation, workers' rights, environmental protections and climate change. Brexiteers are not really very happy about that. So if Boris Johnson does come away with a free trade agreement, he's going to have to upset some Brexiteers. And the thing is, in that scenario, of course, the Brexit dream will always be evergreen unless Boris Johnson actually does exactly what they want. Now, if Boris Johnson leaves without a deal, then all those Brexiteers who say we can cope without a deal will not have many places to retreat to. They can retreat behind the old, ah, but you did Brexit wrong. Boris, you idiot. Um, how do you do a no deal wrong? I have no idea. Uh, a no deal is by definition not a deal. There aren't different versions of no deal. But somehow it will be, you know, uh, Ian Duncan Smith and Nigel Farage, who both supported the withdrawal agreement, are already angling themselves towards saying, well, it was the withdrawal agreement that was the problem, you see. So that's the, but that's the only place they can retreat to. From the point of view of everyone else, who'd be much more reasonable, they'll look at the situation and go, yeah, I don't like Brexit. Now, then there's the United States, which is worth only a third of our trade compared to the EU. However, 
It's still a big old trading block. Now, a United States free trade agreement means accepting those much lower food and environmental standards. Now, this is unpopular with many backbench Tory MPs whose major economies in their local constituencies would be devastated by such moves. And it's also very unpopular with the general population. It would also be very difficult to cover up. Then there's China. So that's worth a fraction of our trade with the EU and much less than our trade with the US, but it is still the third largest by some distance as well. Um, China are pissed off with us over Huawei. They're not very happy with us at all. They've already uh, issued veiled threats in terms of, uh, you know, Chinese companies invested in the UK and basically suggesting this, this is probably not going to happen now. So, uh, yeah, that's that's knackered as well. And the three of those together, as I say, is worth looking at our 2019 trade, 65 percent of our trade. So. I mean, we're obviously not going to get a trade deal with China. We're not even actively pursuing one at the moment. We're not really in a position to. United States has been put on hold. We're certainly not getting anything this year. Uh, I think the latest the UK government suggested that don't expect anything before next spring. And of course, by then we may have a new president. We hope. Um, and as for the EU, that is the only real game in town. But then there's that difficulty. Now... As for general investment, you know, because obviously, regardless of trade deals with other countries, you know, you're looking for international corporations to invest in the UK, some of whom are already based in the UK and are still making their mind up. Thing is that uncertainty is investor repellent and the Tories don't even bother to deny this. This is why they try to say, do you know what businesses really hate? And they really hate uncertainty. Do they really, Michael Gove? Do they really? Yeah, that's why we decided not to extend the transition period. What? Because then they can have the certainty that we're not going to be in the transition period in 2021. Y yeah, but, but we don't know what we will be in. But we won't be in the transition period. No, I can see that. But if we were in the transition period, then we'd have certainty because we know what that means. Not being in the transition period means we, we don't know we don't know what 2021 is. So that's that's actually what you call uncertainty, Mr. Gove. But anyway, never mind. But they don't like so, But what I'm just trying to say is that everyone agrees that, that uncertainty is bad for business, for investment. You don't want to invest for something where it means a five year investment in something. If the market conditions are suddenly going to change when you're partway through that cycle and you spent a load of money and you can't get you can't make a profit anymore. And, and the thing is. You know, first of all, our piss poor response to COVID creates an uncertainty in our economy and, and Brexit creates an uncertainty in our economy. And, and, and these are uncertainties that don't exist in many other comparable economies. And in fact, the specific combination of our piss poor response to COVID and Brexit doesn't exist anywhere else. We are the only country for which these twin major uncertainties exist. So out of all the major economies in the world, we have the largest cloud of uncertainty hanging over us. And this is absolutely voter, uh, sorry, uh, investor repellent. Voters have got nothing to do with it anymore, have they? Um, and the only other trade deal we're actively pursuing at the moment for a quick win is Japan. But like I discussed recently, there are a couple of little problems there. The first is that what was being offered was not as good as the EU-Japan trade deal. I mean, I mean, it won't be, I hear you say. But the government have promised that it will be better. It will be a better trade deal than with Japan than the EU have. Yes, I know, I can see you rolling your eyes. I get it. But the thing is... If we get a trade deal with anyone who also has a trade deal with the EU, people will compare it. So if we get a trade deal with Japan that's not as good as the EU's, people will compare and go, that's not as good as the EU's. So that means that's not as good as we had when we were a member of the EU. Therefore, Brexit is a net loss to us. You said Brexit was going to be brilliant. It's shit. It's shit. Um, so they need a better one, but they're not going to get a better one. So because they're holding out for a better one, we may not get one at all, in which case we also then knacker 
all those British exporters to the Japanese market. You know, um, and if we do get something with Japan, let's say we do get a trade deal with Japan. I mean, again, going by that 2019 data, that was worth less than 2% of our exports by value. Now, it's not an insignificant amount. That, that would translate into an awful lot of jobs dependent upon it. But it's, it's hardly something to run through the meadows about when you look at the bigger picture. Because at the moment, in terms of trade agreements that we do have in place, none of which have, have appeared this year. So for all this, oh, it's been in the EU that's holding us back. As soon as we've left the EU, then we can carry on all these trade agreements. Well, all the trade agreements we have now, now were, were obtained whilst we were still members of the EU. And it accounts for 8% of our exports. So that's 92% of our exports are not covered, from 2019, are not covered with trade agreements for 2021. That's a bit of a problem. And if, if we did get a trade deal with Japan, it'll just bring it up to close to 10%. So that would still be 90 and a bit percent not covered. That doesn't. So you see the, the, a Japanese trade deal, although it can be sold as a political win, economically doesn't really move the needle very far. And if we got a trade deal with America on America's terms, that also doesn't move the needle because it works out at basically the same as we already had as members of the EU. There are, there are some potentially more positives, but there are also negatives, so the net effect is the same. The British government's own figures show it to be rounded off 0% benefit, um, which is better than a net loss, I suppose. But it could be. I mean, within that's an optimistic appraisal, maybe it would be a net loss. So that's where we are now. Um, the only way we can get anything, I mean, so you could think of it at the moment. So we've got 8% 8, 8 of our export is covered with trade agreements. 92% isn't. We're not going to get that 92%. The only one we're even actively pursuing this year is the EU and Japan, which combined would get you about 45%. So we could increase it by about 45% to get it to about 53%. So at best, at absolute best, at the end of this year, we can have covered about 53% of our exports in goods with agreements, which if it was with the EU as well, of course, would hopefully mean something for services. But that is dependent upon, one, accepting a trade deal with Japan that wouldn't be as good as we had with the EU and therefore being politically embarrassing. And two, signing up to some EU rules to take play, you know, to, to be enforced in the UK. Politically difficult. But, you know, I'm sure over the coming weeks we'll start to see where it's going. Like I said, the British government do seem to be using language that's much more positive about a deal. Uh, does sort of suggest that they're coming towards the end game where they're going to stop pissing about and actually try and get something. It also suggests that they genuinely do want to get something. So we'll see. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.